Mate, there's some shorties this weekend, but I'm sensing some of the shorties might get up, but there's a bit of ambush kind of happening. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, there's a shorty in the Turak Handicap uh, that's been all the rage since this, the autumn time, and uh, both of us are keen to take him on. Not giving away too much. No, but there's been some big statements made on this podcast. <laughs> there it really yeah. has. Uh, there's also been some big price things back mm. in this podcast. You have uh, a couple of big each way odds that you yeah. think are absolutely get ons this weekend. I've got a sixty one dollar pop. Yeah, well, that came, a bit of a push for that came out of nowhere. Yeah, but you've got to listen to find out. Yeah, you do. Um, but if you're gonna have a bet on some each way things, some shorties, some sixty one dollar pops, where would you have a bet like that? <laughs> the good people at Ned's, as always, thank you for looking after us. You can do anything you like on there. Uh, you can get weird and exotic too with the good people at Ned. So maybe that's the way to play this weekend with some, maybe some Quinzies, maybe some tries, maybe some Quaddies. Uh, there's also got the profiles on there with Ned's. You can follow us in if you like. Uh, see what we're tipping. Uh, yeah, it's a little community on there. We love it. Absolutely, we do. But what are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. I need to ask you a question. Be curious, Drifters. Mr. Brightside bends the ball and wins again. Sardozzi wins the Oaks for J-Mac. The photo finish. Mr. Brightside or Romantic Warrior. The Mayor's going great guns. Fangirl. Look at the go. Fangirl. Imperatrice has got her. And a race gone by. Imperatrice by a leak. Overpass. More Bakers delight in Perth. Redina. Redina just won it. I'd say Tom Kedden won the spring champion in a cakewalk. Without a fight. Without a fight for the Caulfield Cup. Mate, we have a lot of ground to cover today. Lots of, lots of ground. Yeah. Um, but there's a bit of controversy that we need to address from some of some of you out there. <laughs> You're doing that we have to address this. So I'll hand it, I'll handball it over to you. Look. Out of the goodness of our hearts <laughs> and the generosity of our wallets. Mm. You know, some say that when we open our wallet, moth, moths fly out. Yeah. That might be the case, but we've managed to <laughs> drum up four figures, four of them. Four of them. One, two, three, four. A gorilla, a grand. Uh, out of the goodness of our hearts for the drifters for this team in competition. And, you know, we're doing that from, a, you know, a moral high ground, I'd say. Like, yeah. we, we have the highest ground in terms of morality. Absolutely. And, you know, we expect that to be the caliber in which the drifters partake in this competition. <laughs> <laughs> and there'd be, there's been some nefarious activity by some drifters. Two individuals. Two individuals. And I just need to get your permission. Are we naming and shaming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to. I'm happy to. But they've broken the rules. <laughs> they've broken the rules straight up. And it's not fair for the rest of the thousands of people in this tipping competition. There's thousands of people in this tipping competition and only two people have broken the rules. And you might be wondering, Drifters, well, it seems pretty straightforward. Like, how can you break the rules of this competition? Yeah. Well, quite simply, when you're putting in your tips after the fact, I'd yeah. say that's cheating. Yeah, I would have thought so. One of them doing Southport Tycoon <laughs> the next day. Huh? Huh? That ain't good enough. Yeah. Not in our tipping competition. Southport Tycoon, the day after, on a Saturday morning, after he's run a drum in the Manicado at double figures, and therefore you're thinking that you're going to get double points? We have receipts, bro. We have receipts, bro. <laughs> and uh, the other offender, um, look, <laughs> As far as I was aware, there were there were some delays in the in the racing down at Flemington mm. on Saturday. Yeah. But I didn't think they were still racing at 10 p.m. on no, Saturday I wouldn't night. Have, wouldn't have thought so. I didn't think so. I thought they were run and done by then. Uh and you know, I think they gave them two gave themselves two first, a, a second and maybe a fourth. I was like, oh yeah. So they've kind of tried to sneak away through that way. But if you don't get them in, you don't get them in, bruh. If you don't get them in, you don't get them in. As and we we have integrity. And to uphold the integrity of this tipping competition, what are we doing to these two individuals? Look, these two individuals, and, you know, I can be a real asshole, but I'm, go I'm not going to name and shame you um, because you know who you are listening. Um, 
the, these two individuals will not be partaking in the Timmy comp anymore. No. And it serves as a warning to the rest of you. Yeah. Because Don't, do not mess with us. Yeah. And we might <laughs> you might be asking, why wasn't this caught the first time? <laughs> <laughs> Southport Tycoon ran two weeks ago. Yeah, on grand final eve. Suez, we were celebrating. Suez. Look, our fish for, were enormous. We had to fry them. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, we just – we but we do have receipts. We, we know exactly, yeah. exactly down to the second when yes. people submit their tips. May this serve as a warning to you drifters. Yes. So uh, – and we're going to put in a new system, which we're going to keep between us uh, uh-huh. to determine who – knowing exactly when the cutoff is. <laughs> yeah. So – don't try it again. Uh, we want a fair and integrity filled tipping competition. That's a bit of fun between thousands of mates. Thousands and thousands of mates. So, speaking of, well done to Andrew Carolyn, who's currently on top with 15 points. Uh, five points week one, 10 points week two. Matt Gordoin, 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 uh, he's second with 14 points. Then we've got a tied. Third place position, Benny Pace of BP of Atmosphere fame uh, and Daniel Lacos. Uh, well done, guys. You're on 13 points. But yeah. there's so much footy left to play and the yeah. competition is incredibly close. Yes. There's a couple of shorties this weekend. If you can get the favourites beaten, you'll be richly, richly rewarded. Yeah, very well rewarded. It'll be fascinating to see how the drifters actually tip yeah, those actually, two yeah, races. It actually will be. Yeah. So do you go for glory? <laughs> Risk <laughs> it all. You're going <laughs> to... Gonna puss out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. In breaking news to me, as you sat down in that chair, uh, you said to me, "Do you see the uh, Everest and the All Star Mile have been upgraded?" I was like, "No, nah. it's news to me now." Yes. So the Everest and the All Star Mile are officially Group Ones. Wow. Drifters. Um, the first time we've been recording this podcast, and the first time in a while that uh, races have been upgraded to Group One status. I think, you know that. The Everest, without a doubt, is a Group One race, and it has been in, in everything except for title the last few years, uh, probably since its inception. The All Star Mile questionable, but well, I think what you can say from the All Star Mile is that the winners probably ran to a rating that is yes. definitely um, befitting a Group One. So I, I think racing Victoria, you're on notice because you need to figure out exactly. They, they are though; they need to figure out exactly. Okay, what, what does it mean, the all-star mile? Mm. How are we going to determine this field to make sure that the tail isn't longer than a kangaroo's each year? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Group, there has to be some downgraded, right? Has to be. Well, there's been a, a lot more that have been upgraded. So things like the Silver Eagle, Group 3 now. Um, the Five Diamonds is a listed race now. Oh, no. Things like the Gong, oh, um, the Hunter, they've all been upgraded. So I don't know. I don't know what mm-hmm. what else has happened in Racing Victoria, but um, Racing New South Wales has had a field day. Um, we can talk more about that because there's there's a listed race this weekend that um, yeah is, is worth as much as the Epsom, the time honoured. So how many how many uh, what jurisdiction of racing do you think is like the Top echelon, UK, Australia, Japan. Oh well, look. I think we have a fair argument in terms of in terms of. I was looking at statistics uh, a few weeks ago. Shout out to the Straight, which is an independent, um, I guess, horse racing journalism source. Uh, that's pretty new. It's it's been um, doing a great job talking about all things racing and the breeding game, and and they actually shared some statistics around um, what percentage of Australian races are actually uh, afforded group or listed status or black type status in comparison to how much racing we actually have in this country. And you know what? We actually we're really really similar to pretty much every other ju- jurisdiction because we have so much racing. Yeah. You almost have to treat each state like an individual country when it comes to racing in Australia because they are so vastly different. Mm. Um, but I think that if you're looking at who's who's the number one C when it comes to racing, well, for me personally, I think you've got to look at probably the probably the states or the UK. I'd say. Um, but then we, we, I think we deserve to have a seat at the table. Uh, I think Japan does as well, um, and Hong Kong racing that is elite. Mm. So I think I've I've just 
I've just counted these up very, very quickly. So it'll be around the mark though, about I think 42 Group 1 races in the UK, uh, flats. Yep. And then Japan have 24. Yeah. So it's like now we've got, what, 77 now. Something like that, yeah. 77. Yeah. Just doesn't sit right to me. Like I think we just, well, we've been on record several times about mm. this. And the, I get your point about like treating each jurisdiction differently, but- <laughs> Where I think that argument falls down is when the Randwick Guineas and the Australian Guineas are on the same day. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, if you're looking at purely at numbers, yeah, look at it as a different jurisdiction. But in practice, yeah. we, we don't treat it like that. Yeah. Um, the fact that we've got, you know, a Hill Stakes worth more than a, a Might and Power Stakes, you know, and Hill Stakes is racing in Sydney and the Might and mm. Power is racing in Melbourne. Like, that's wrong. Um, so, yeah- it, I'm I'm all for I'm all for you know upgrading races to Group One status and you know changing the status of of other races, but if with with push you need to shove, brah. Yeah. So yeah, it is what it is. If yeah, if the Everest is a Group One, I think that's fair enough. You also all racing Victoria. You're officially noticed by us, just like the two, <laughs> just like the two punters who have been kicked out of our competition. <laughs> on all right. We have a ton of racing to get through, so let's go to Caulfield to kick it all off. The Caulfield Carnival. Rail is in the true position. Uh, you know, I think there's a bit of rain around today, but it's fine for the rest of the week. It'll be a lovely, nice track come Saturday. So, race seven is the Might and Power Stakes, 2,000 meters, group one, away for age. Uh, your favorite's Mr. Brightside. Second favorite, a tissue who's on the quick backup. A lot of horses on the quick backup this weekend. And then the likes of Coco Sun, who I can see running a nice race. I don't know where to look here. Like, <laughs> do I, is it just that easy? Mr. Brightside, $1. fifty. Probably. All things being equal, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, what's his 2,000 meter record? Five tries, no wins at the distance, one second, one third. Look. If I'm in a certain tipping competition, <laughs> that's a that's enough of a case for me to make. Yeah. Absolutely. I think if you look beneath the surface though, two of those races were Cox plates, mm. one he nearly won, and, and the other was before he sort of took the next step in his career, and the other one was that Queen Elizabeth Stakes race with prior to Jenny. So that's three of them. Uh, I you will not see me betting into this race, obviously. Mm. The obvious one for the drifters out there to try and get him beat, I think his five dollars in the market is, is isn't probably worth the play either. Mm. I think that's too short it's based too on short. what I, based on what I've seen from her this prep. Mm. If this was two thousand meters for Lamington, good deck, different story. Yeah, I don't think she's a core field horse. She yeah. does get J-Mac, though. That was what I was going to say. She's a J-Mac horse. She's a J-Mac horse. Come here, darling. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, babe. So, I could I could potentially have a little play on her, but I agree. It's not really something I'm that interested in. No. So, um, yeah, probably Mr. B on top. But, yeah, a tissue, the clear danger. Adelaide River, make a case for him as well. He's dual accepted. Um, but he was dog shit last start. But prior to that, he had form around Buckaroo. He was low flying first up, so we'll see. But uh, race eight is the Caulfield Guinea, sixteen hundred meters for the, uh, the three year old set weights. Broadsiding, drawn Barry Nine, J Mac on nine of eleven, dollar fifty five. Is he one that you prefer to go into compared to Mister B? <laughs> I'd say I'd say equal. Yeah. <laughs> The, the trouble is with broadsiding in this race, well, there's not really any trouble. Uh, some of these, we what's their ceiling? Mm. If we go back to that other race real quick, uh, we know Val declares ceiling. Mm. Bro's a nine-year-old gelding. His yeah. ceiling is a Melbourne Cup five years ago. He's, yeah. Calipor, we know his ceiling. Adelaide River, probably probably a little bit untapped. Right. We'll, we'll know after this prep. Yeah. Um, a tissue, yeah. deny knowledge, Jenny Lala. I think Coco Sun's probably got a bit upside, but we know their ceiling. If we if we're looking at the Caulfield Guineas, like what's Angel Capital ceiling? What's Evaporates? What's Wanarua's? What's Mayfair's? Mm. Public attentions. Mm. 
But you also, do you know, do you know who else is healing? We don't know yet. Broad sightings. They're the favourite broad sightings. <laughs> So you can make an argument that it's a sticky out dollar fifty five to get involved in, but mm. you could also do yourself a favour and not get involved, not get involved in either. Yeah, which is what I'll be doing. I'll be I'll be watching. I'll be wearing this hat. <laughs> I'll be wearing this hat because this guy Animo who I'm wearing on my head mm. on this race a few years ago, he was so much better than him, right. uh, and I think it'll be the same case here. Okay, I think the tipping competition. I reckon the third elect, third most votes will be evaporated double figures. He'll be the Double figure horse that people would tip, I reckon. I think so. Um, if Angel bucks. Capital was double figures, which I think he might, might be the one who comes in a bit, though. Yeah, I think so. Maybe your sevens or your eights. Yeah. So I, I reckon his price and Mayfair's price might switch from seven to nines. Uh, or they both start around eights. I don't know. You can have that. Uh, Tropicus is an interesting horse. Been waiting for him to get out to the mile. He can run on a bit, uh, but Mark Zara is not a bad booking at all. Um, just probably got. Run off his feet um, in the Golden Rose, but on his on his Melbourne leg, you know he's he could pretend, he's won at Caulfield before. He's not the he's a big price, but he's in my top four numbers at least. He's a big Mick Price. Uh, speaking of Mick Price, I think public attention is on a big odds that I've wanted to see get out to a mile. He's he's a rung below the best ones here, but he'll be in my numbers. Mm. Yeah, I can't wait to see Broadside and go around. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait. He stinks of animo, doesn't he? Real Reek, st- reeks of it. Real, real stench of him. <laughs> uh, so, race nine is the Scalacci. It's not the Turak. The Turak is the final race on the card, which, which I like, which I love. Which I think they saw this quaddy. They're like, well, people are going to single out the the favourites in the first and second leg. Let's really, let's really ruin their day by putting <laughs> the <laughs> handicap mile at the end. Yeah. Uh, but this race is this is a tricky little it is little yeah. affair. I could have like basically like seven of these winning. It is, yeah. Uh, I was probably drawn to to two horses more than anything else. Um, number four, Kalos, and number nine, Bellatrix Star. Uh, Mornington Glory has been found in the market. Fair enough. Last start, Group One winner. Um, Caulfield doesn't read as well for him as Mooney Valley and. 1,100 metres doesn't read as well for him as 1,000 metres, but he's just come off a group one win, so and he's drawn well, and it's a – is it a wait for age race? Uh, yes. Yeah, it is. So he could still run a drum. Like, yes, it doesn't, but there was also – in the Monash, he was, you know, he was no good. Uh, didn't handle the going that day on a soft seven. Prior to that, he ran third in Oakley Plate at Caulfield. Mm. So he has run super there. And I think uh, 1,100 metres does suit him um, okay. He's He does like to zoom around at the 1,000, doesn't <laughs> He's he? the greyhound. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kalos, it's been a while between runs for him. I think um, they figured out that they like to keep him fresh. Keep him fresh, 1,100 metres. Key booking, J-Mac on gate one. I don't mind that at Caulfield. Mm. So, and Bellatrix Star, the horse that frustrated you a bit. Um, oh. Last Friday night at the Silly. Valley, or two Silly. Friday nights ago. Silly. Uh, I was on Gigi's Miss Truth, who I thought mm. ran home pretty well, but she was no match for Bellatrix. Uh, massive drop in weight, uh, nice gait, and mm. $7.50 I could get around that. So they're probably the two I'll be thinking about when I'm putting on my bet. Yeah, I think you can have Bellatrix for me just because big big step up, in my opinion, to this Enormous sort of, step sort up. Of grade. Enormous step up. You know, she gets the weight relief, but... Um, yeah, she was getting weight relief last start for beating some of those home. Stupid to overlook that at the Valley. <laughs> I was furious at myself. Mahaba's tried well. Star Patrol, what, where the hell has he been at? Um, I could see he's he's braced super first up. party has been one of yours. Recommend, recommendation's been uh, super. Like Oscar's Fortune was running around beating Amelia's or running around with Amelia's jewel in a quokka. So... I don't know where to look. I'll Tricky probably- little race might be a might be a field job. May as well. <laughs> yeah. Got some percentage to play with. True. All right. So, how many races have has Pericles accepted in this weekend? <laughs> the Turak handicap, sixteen hundred meters, Group One handicap. Your favourite is another Will at two ninety. Uh, he has drawn a barrier one with Mickey D on board. He'll be awfully hard to beat. Do you see? 
Uh, prior to Jenny was in the nominations for this field. Mm. Troubling. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know what they were trying to do. I don't know. Whether, whether they were trying to just get the weight down on another, another will, but Maybe. it would have dropped everyone else's weight anyway, so I don't, yeah. it didn't really make sense to me. No. Uh, I'm, I think uh, Uncle Tony and... And Mr. Kieran Mo are probably having a, a few disagreements about where to send her. Whether they, whether Kieran was had a bit of trepidation about the quick backup from the King Charlie into the Cox Plate, I don't know. I don't know either. But we'll see. Uh, another will is one of the most fascinating horse that horses that I saw in the noms, and she was she was thrown a nomination in everywhere at Caulfield was orchestral. Mm. I was not expecting to see her here. That that piques my interest. I was like, oh, this race has a massive tail now, which it kind of does, but you chuck an orchestral in there. Al Safina absolutely flew home at the Valley the other Cheering night super, yeah. with the entire grandstand on. Then when's the last time you saw Damien Lane get to 53 and a half on Osipenko? Very true. What about Craig Williams riding on Craig? <laughs> <laughs> That's meant to be. <laughs> G'day. <laughs> Do you know what I've got an eye on in this race? What four-year-old is going to run nicely and then head in towards a mm. uh, Golden Eagle? So, got an eye on that. Uh, what, Craig? Orchestral. Is he the only one? Orchestral. Oh, orchestral. They're the two. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try and get another little beat in this race. I He's been the favourite for a very long time in this race, mm. almost by default. Mm. And I think if you look a little bit closer, it's like, okay, well, yeah, he's been he's got a phenomenal record, but what's he been beating up on in his career? Mm. He's coming out of benchmark races, and obviously that's to keep his rating down. But I don't think he's particularly well weighted. Still, no, he's only got half a kilo off Antino, who's going round against the likes of Pride of Jenny and Mister Brightside. Mm. Like, yeah, they're clearly better than him, but this is way easier than what he's been contesting. Blake Shin on sexual. <laughs> Orchestra was a very interesting nomination in this race, so <laughs> keep a close eye on her. Do you know the horse that I'm really hoping gets to double figures and stays around that, but I think the market will find him because the market's smarter than I am, is the number one C, Desert Lightning. Mm. So bro, bro resumed with uh, Kat Coleman and Peter Moody in the Chautauqua Stakes. 1,200 metres, not his jam, especially carrying... Tw- 61 kilos behind a little deep in Arkansas Kid. A little deep has had great form this prep, as has Arkansas Kid. Uh, dropped to 59 and a half kilos in the Sandown Stakes. Craig had 54 kilos there, but Craig had Luke Curry on. Craig now gets Craig Williams on, <laughs> but he only drops half a kilo to 53 and a half, um, whereas Desert Lightning drops from 59 and a half kilos mm-hmm. to 57 kilos. And, and Craig was not making up that much mm. on Desert Lightning. Mm. Gate 11's tricky for Desert Lightning, but I know where he's going to be in the running. So he's probably the one that I'm going to have on top, closely followed by Antino. Watch Pericles run an absolute heater in this race. I know. He's going to run a heater. He will. But he's also dual knock, so <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to put him on top yet. Yeah. So I was just looking through another – and winning margins for another will, right? So he – one and a half lengths to Wish Law Lass and Run Harry Run last start. 0.2 of a length to Hit a Shock where he absolutely mowed him down first up. Beaten two and a half lengths into Doncaster on a heavy eight where Pericles, speaking of him, had 54 and a half kilos and another Will started $3.60 favorite and had 50. So he's gained five kilos and Pericles has gained two and a half. So automatically... Like Pericles for going around in that Doncaster, yeah. two and a half kilos better off. Absolutely. And I think you, if you're keen on another will, he, he could just be better than these. Like he's known for a Cox blade and, and Kieran Ma, he's, he's not going to have him fully tuned up mm. in his, you know, first up, his two first up wins. Like this has always been the grand final for him. <laughs> but I think he's going to have to run mm. the best he's ever run here. Uh, in order to win, because th- this isn't, you know, this isn't a, a knockabout field of bloody benchmark one hundred. Jimmy the Bears. Oh, hey, hey, sorry, he's in this field. Sorry, <laughs> at forty one dollars. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I'm 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 keen to get him beat, 
Mm. Ha- happy to be proven wrong because it means we've got another good horse to add mm. to the ranks. But yeah. I think I can get him beaten this race. Yeah. I was taken by Al Safina. Man, she ran super. Like, she has a pretty explosive turn of foot. Yeah. Dry, like, de- dry deck Caulfield will suit running around Ascot. Yeah. She'll be used to that. I think so. Like, you know, she's had four four attempts at the distance, three wins, one second. 12 bucks. Barry 10, she's going to get back anyway. So, Jai McNeil. Weak. Got it, dog. But he's won a group one, his last group one in this race on Thunder. Yeah. Was that like six years ago? <laughs> three. It was before this podcast. I think wasn't it? it was three years ago. Yeah. It'd probably be about three years ago. I'd yeah. say. So, it's been a long time between. And we forgot to mention on Sunday, and I, f- I feel terrible for him, but Chad, Chad got his yes. drought on Cheerwood. About 10 years, isn't it? Yeah, at least. It was a long time. One Good of on the biggest. Ch- Good on you, Chad. Yeah. To be fair, Chad was in Hong Kong for a while. But Chad still, was. But there's still Group 1 racing over there. Yes. So, so it's no excuse, Chad. But, yeah. um, but yes, Al Safina, 12 bucks. I think there's- I'm, I'm double figure hunting this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I've won- I've, And we'll get to it. But one of the- It's the best each way bet of the carnival. Of the spring. Later on at Rose Hill. Keep you your eyes here. peeled. All right, so you're you've got the best each way tip of the carnival this mm-hmm. weekend. Yeah, I reckon this could be like lay of the carnival. Another word. Whoa! Just because I'm keen to get him beat. <laughs> That's crazy talk. I'm keen to get him beat. So so therefore, wouldn't not, wouldn't that be a lay? Is that isn't that how fucking betfair works? <laughs> 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 like I'm I'm just I'm just a you know, but lay of the weekend. Oh my god, lay well, of the carnival rather. That is wild stuff. Like, well, that's the thing, though. Like, if if everyone's so keen on him, it's not that he true. It's not that he's like a dollar fifty, but yeah. but all the talks been about him. It's like, well, if if I get him beat, isn't that therefore, isn't that what I is? <laughs> I th- yeah yeah <laughs> it is <laughs> like, it is. Excuse my ignorance, but <laughs> but I think a lot of people would be like, all right, guarantee me one Group One winner this this spring, and a lot of people would go like outside of broadsiding, and they go like chips in another wheel in the two rack. I I, I, you fully, I fully believe that because he's 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 a get back horse and he sucks him in and it's like <laughs> he's a vis- he's visually just so impressive you're like oh there's nothing in Australia that could beat that thing well in reality there's plenty so well, that's what I'm saying yeah oh. excuse excuse the terminology yeah but you know I, sw- I, I think I'm, I'm keen to get him beat okay I love it good for you oh look come at me if you want I don't like it really doesn't bother me no. anyone listening. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm happy to be proven wrong. I was, I'm just, I, I was I was keen to get him beat before I saw the final field, and I and because I knew Antino was coming here. Yeah, and I was like, I don't think Antino's gonna if if it, Antino's not gonna be the top weight. Then mm. and then I saw the weights. So I was like, huh? He's only getting half a kilo off Antino. Mm. Would another will be running as close to Pride Jenny and Mister Brightside in the fan stakes last Friday, two Fridays ago? Uh, yeah, maybe. I maybe. But Four horse field, so hard to say. But yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You're just trying to make a point. Yeah, no, you've made a point. I think you've made a big point. Uh, I'm just looking at Antino because he ran in this race last year, didn't he? Yeah, he ran second to attrition. Mm. Mm, interesting. It is interesting. All right, let's go through the rest of this card because it is plentiful. Um, race two is the Thoroughbred Club of Australia Plate. 1,200 meter, three-year-old filly, set weights and penalties. My girl, Erno's Cube, Jewel accepted. She comes here, top weight, 58 and a half kilos, but she has the best form in the race. She's been racing a, a, against the likes of Autumn Glow, Amina, Manal. So I think she's the pony for me, but she's also accepted in Sydney. So if she comes here, you know. The other horse that I was entertaining was I Am Velvet. Yeah, that's the one I was entertaining. Uh, I think if Erno's Cube is in this race, I'll probably bet on her, but I'm not 100% sure she will be because mm. of the dual nom. But I, I like Iron Velvet. Has a head carry like Espiona, though. Like, puts it to the side and looks to the crowd, basically. Um, the Melbourne, on her Melbourne leg as well. So it's basically the opposite of what Espiona does, um, or used to do. Um, so you dropped off your girl, Silma, really on. Needed to see more from her last start. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Now, race three is the Northwood Plume Stakes. 1,200 metres group three for the Mares. Set weights and penalties. We see Charmstone back at the track. We do. Good to see. Yeah. 
What did you think of her trial? I thought it was okay. I didn't. I wasn't really taken by it. Need to see it from her after a twelve month time off. Mm. Gummy gummy gum drops. Big price at nineteen dollars. But uh, I've already mentioned a little deep on this podcast uh, with the form around Desert Lightning. I will mention her again. Uh, really liked her last start. She ran second. Back again, three dollars thirty. Marks are on. Nice gate. Um, Jewel accepted. Jewel accepted as well. Yeah. For the Navision in Sydney. Yes. Um, she'll be awfully hard to beat if she is here. Uh, I thought, in more than ways than one, Graham Bag is in for a big spring. I think. Oh, his team lost the grand final. Swan supporter is he? Yeah. Oh, commiserations, Graham. Sorry, bruh. I'm lucky, bruh. Um, but Kundalini used for Graham Beck now used to be Kira Ma Philly, but he's got her absolutely flying now. She did have a weight advantage advantage against the likes of Little Deep and Revolutionary Miss. Revolutionary Miss is frank that form and then some last weekend. Uh, but she did come from right out wide and absolutely looped them basically. So she'll have to do something similar from Barry Twelve with Mickey D on. But I think she's in a good headspace, I think she's racing really well. Mare in form, I could I could do worse things at eight bucks. Could see the market coming for her if uh, a little deep and um, a little deep comes out. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Yeah, really, I really could. Um, <laughs> so I think uh, this week, I think there's a one kilo swing in a little deep's um, favour, but we'll see. Interesting runner, Aviatrice. Mm. Uh, one nicely more fulfilled last start. She's a good price at eight dollars too. So mm-hmm. yeah, might have to give the mafia a bit of a call to see what the form, how the form really stacks up. Uh, the Catanarchs, hundred and fifty years vase, sixteen hundred meters. Group three for the mares, set weights and penalties. My old mate with J Mac on City of Lights half sister to Winks is here. She was. Okay, behind the likes of Terramata Roots, she was flying through the line. So, I think she'll be looking for the mile, absolutely. And we have seen her on her Melbourne leg a couple of times before, albeit uh, she did break her maiden on at Geelong. So, probably up in grade, but, you know, 550, she's the most likely one I'm probably going to have a bet on. I'm going to have a little bet each way on a $61 pop. Hello. Uh, number 12, Matriarch Rose. Again. Cardiac arrhythmia. Mm. Last start uh, at the Valley. So, clear excuses. The start before that, she ran home really nicely um, behind the lights of Poifect, who failed uh, last start. But there's got to be question marks there. I just think, you know, coming off cardiac arrhythmia, if I thought she was going to run well last mm. start, back her again at that price. Why That's, not? Yeah. I I have I have that justification for some other horses this weekend. So why wouldn't I? Um, the weekend hustlers race five, fourteen hundred meters listed handicap. Griff is your top weight. Jimmy Star, two dollars seventy. I was so disappointed there because I found him last start and I was keen to back him again. And he's dual accepted in Sydney as well. Yes, yeah, but. I thought this was a much better setup, and he's drawn perfect in both. He's second emergency in Sydney, though. So I can see him running here. Uh, he's the one I found as well, obviously, like, doesn't take an expert. But if he's not running here, I was keen on running by last start. Um, mm. And that was the heavy deck race that Alcefina ran third in. Grinzinger Bell put him to the sword, has absolutely no wet track form running by. So tricky gate. Uh, but loves Caulfield, Mickey D to navigate it with 54 kilos. Uh, not all suit you with Neds. Hmm. The other one who I believe, I'm just checking this now as well. No, he's not. Okay. I thought he was dual accepted Coast Watch. Um, number six for Mark Zara in those famous silks. Um he was he was good behind the likes of NCAP and bases loaded in Sydney. Um, barrier two here, I could see him just sit, settling behind the pace and as Mark did on Revolutionary Miss, bump one out of the way and go like this race is mine, bruh. <laughs> so I Good could see Marky. I could see uh, Coastwash do that, but yeah, 
Outside of Jimmy, I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, now, the Herbert Power Stakes is twenty uh, race six, 2,400 metres, group two, handicap. You're shaking your head. I had no idea what to do with this race. <laughs> I had absolutely no idea what to do with this race. There's so many things out of form in this race. Akita Sushi. Uh, the map had a setback. Um, yeah, there is a ton. Like Nick Ryan, I think, has sensed that, right? And he's throwing the bottom weight in, who was racing over a mile last start, jumping up <laughs> 800 meters. Holy shit. Yeah. Now, Nick Ryan, he knows how to get his horses fit, but that horse was only racing two weeks ago. So, or three weeks ago. So, it's going to be a hell of an effort if that horse can get up and win. Absolutely, it would be. And it's $11, so it's been supported. Yeah, I don't know. I was, I was sort of looking at Gear Up, who's been solid at this prep. Um, comes out of that positivity race, future history as well. Um, before that, comes out of a race that had Young Werther and Duke DeCessa, and Young Werther ran pretty well uh, last weekend in the Turnbull. So I don't know if I was leaning towards gear up, but he doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. Yeah, I think he's been way more consistent in the last 12 months, gear up. But mm. in saying that, he's still only won once out of six attempts. So I know exactly. And he's the one that I found too. Yeah. I think the key to gear up is good ground. He cannot handle wet tracks at no. all. And no. if you look at, so this is, you look at his uh, distance form. So he was, and there's some, there are some uh, similar offenders. That he beat, right? So, he was beaten. He The last time he won at this distance, he beat Cleveland. Now, Cleveland, and that was at Leopardstown. So, Cleveland is a horse that just has none. None in Australia. Except for the time that he... <laughs> Sydney, Sydney Cup favourite? Is that what, when he walked, rolled around? No, I reckon it might have been that. No, I remember that race at the Valley uh, oh, on the Friday him? night and he beat Van de Clare and Van de Clare, mm. I just decided to put on a speculative multi and that's right. It was like four legs and he was the last leg. Van de Clare ah. ran second, Cleveland beat him home. That's right. So yeah, Cleveland has and run definitely well, not one of mine. Prick of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see he's finished a few lengths behind Dubai Honor over this distance as well on a synthetic track. But, yeah, gear up's probably the one for me, but we'll probably spend far too much time on this race. <laughs> far too much time. Uh, oh, we did the Scalacci, so we did the Quaddy. It's probably a mistake, but oh well. If you can hear that in the background, that's rain. Um, Absolutely pissing down yeah, here in Brizzy. It is. But let's get to Sydney. Um, let's go to race four, which is the Gloaming Stakes. 1,800 metres, good three set weights for the three-year-olds. My guy, Henlein. Big pogo stick on him. He's a real watch the manning yard before you bet type operation. <laughs> yeah, he's I, a... He's I, a for, the, for the uninitiated, he's a real linebacker type. He's a linebacker type. Uh, not that poor, not that poorly behaved, I'd say. No. But uh, he's, he's in that similar ilk. Uh, but what we will say is that he was playing up, had the... Had the fifth leg out um, mm-hmm. in the mounting yard, and then he ran super behind Evaporate. He did. And now, Evaporate's, you know, one of your preferred horses in the Caulfield Guineas now. Yeah. And to be fair, Linebacker did that first up as well. He ran, he had the pogo stick out, and then he ran well first up, but he ran dog shit second up. He did. Uh, <clears throat> but I think keep your powder dry with him until you see the mounting yard. But mm. uh, he's clearly got the talent to win this race. Swift Falcon. Hell of a win. Hell of a win last start. I'm fascinated why they're running him again, though. Yeah. Was it that soft and he just pulled up that well? You'd assume so. You'd have to assume so. I don't know if the... Is the Hawk stable known for doing this? The quick backup? I'm Um, not sure. Yeah. Doesn't really scream. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, not sure. So, uh, I was looking at this race and I was probably... I was probably of the opinion that Henley's probably the one that I want to back, but I'm just going to keep my powder dry. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. All right. The Roman Console. This is a tough little race. It is. 1,200 metres, group two for the three-year-old set weights. This is the race that Erno's Cube is dual accepted in. And to be honest, I think she's probably better off going to Melbourne than here. Uh 
because you have the likes of Gatsby's, Coleman. There's just alternative form ones galore. So you have Coleman running in the group ones at Mooney Valley. You have the likes of Gatsby's who ran at a heritage, who was beaten by perspiration. And then you have the likes of High Octane, who was r- r- running in the Poseidon down the straight um, behind Growing Empire. And then you have Provincial Form and Yo- Yoshi Nobu and Spirit of Wealth. And Spirit of Wealth is like second in the market. I don't know where to look. The Spirit of Wealth looks to be a very smart little filly, uh, little grey filly. I wasn't sure where to look either. <clears throat> Particularly with Switzerland coming back and could could just turn up and be a different horse after that failing first up, but you sort of have to see it. Oh, Eight dollars, that's short. Perspiration, better price than Gatsby's, and, and there was nothing from that race to, that suggested to me that you shouldn't be backing Perspiration here and, over Gatsby's. And uh, Perspiration is getting another. So Gatsby's carried. No, sorry, that's right. Yeah, Gatsby's gets a two kilo weight swing. Well, that's probably why. Yeah. But no, I uh, a tricky little race. But Spirit of Wealth does look to have incredible upside. I, this is a big step up for a, for a little filly, though. Benchmark sixty eight Warwick Farm form. So yeah, if if that's the type of sicko you are, then all means by all means, <laughs> five dollars is short, very short. All right, here we go. The tap crag, <laughs> best each way bet. Of the spring is here. And let me tell you why. King of Russo. This horse is absolutely flying. Perfect setup for him. So he was dual accepted for this in the Roman console. And I always knew that Peter Snowden was a good judge because this race is so much easier. So much easier. So much easier. First up, he was beaten four lengths to Stormboy, who looked like black caviar. He did. He did. And, you know, he beat the rest of that field by three lengths. So, he's only a length off like second place there. But next start, he was only three lengths away from Growing Empire and one and a half lengths away from First Settler. What am I missing here? Loved the tune-up trial in between runs there as well. And you're getting $15. 15 bucks to find out. You are. I think he is a stupid price in this race. I really do. I think he, you can have a really healthy each-way bet on King Russo this weekend. I think he's a cracking bet. Get on the train. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. No, yeah, I, I, th- I think that's an incredible case that you made, uh, particularly when I'm looking at this race and I'm unsure yeah. how to play it. A node to be three dollar thirty favorite. Probably needed to see more from him last time. Like he was beaten eight lengths. Yeah, yeah. Just party can't couldn't possibly back anything out of that stable. Uh, Snack bar does have the lady Shenandoah and Mayfair form, so that's probably the the more obvious one. But um, gap between runs for him. It is. Hmm. It is. But and I don't have a firm opinion. Yeah, big, big king of tap so. crack. Now, the Hill Stakes, there's another Kraken bet in this race. This is the second best each way bet of the spring here. Fucking hell. So, Pericles is your second favorite, rather. Royal Patronage, what are, you, what are your opinions on this horse backing up? He had a tough run. And he's drawn wide here again. He had a tough run. Uh, I, thought, I thought he went well. I thought he ran great. I thought he went well. What's so, left in the tank, though? Well, it's got to be the concern. It's got to be the concern. Yeah. So don't leave me hanging. Oh uh, well, no, I agree. He, I had a look through his USA and his UK form. He's a bit of a traveller. This guy. Um, month between runs over there, and you know they race different here, of course. But and I think he is quite durable because they've been running him every two weeks when he's been here. So I think there is a bit of durability about him. But Barry. I would be more interested if he drew barrier two or three. Mm-hmm. Barrier 10, he's going to have another tough run. I just don't know what's left. Um, so, I'm happy to risk him at $3.40. Kovalika was unlucky. He's getting out to a suitable distance, Kovalika. He is. We run on a bit. Oh, I couldn't possibly. Yeah. Okay. 
So who who are you keen on? I've been waiting for you to say what your each way play is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so that's what I said. Don't leave me hanging. Oh, right. Uh, number five, nonconformist. Nonconformist. Yeah. The old boy. Why wouldn't he? How's this form read? In the Chelmsford, he was beaten 1.4 lengths by Buckaroo. <laughs> that's elite form. It is good form, isn't it? It's elite form. Like... He had 59 kilos that day. It was a weight for age race. But, um, and so, so is this. So, I think Barry Five, Harry Coffee on again. I can see Graham Begg absolutely ambushing the Sydney Siders like he does time and time and time again. He does do it. And I think with nonconformist, I think the old boy can get the JD. Yes. Uh, oh. For some reason, I, I, I sort of kept looking at attrition. Mm. And, like, he, he needed to show us so much more this prep so far. But um, this is his first time stretching out um, to 1,900 metres for – I don't think he's even gone um, further than a mile before, I don't think. Uh, well, he has once, actually, in the Underwood last year. Mm. And I was coming from the Fian into the Underwood, that's right. Um <clears throat> And he's a big price. I don't know why. I just I sort of kept looking at him in this race and just thinking like, you know, is that what he needed? Does he need to be fourth up? Does he ne- does he need you know the the Sydney way of going? I'm I'm not sure. Mm. But I was just kept coming back to him. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the Epsom form probably reads probably reads best for this race. So probably your your Pericleses and your your Royal Patronages and your your Kovalikas. Mm. The other horse who's at a massive price in this race, I already mentioned him, and his dual accept is Adelaide River. So, drew 16 last start. No excuses for him. He just ran dog shit out no of excuses. Off day. Uh, maybe it was second up syndrome. Maybe he had a, a full dose of it. Because first up in, in the challenge suit behind Buckaroo, <laughs> he was super. Best was- run in Australia to date. If he can recapture that, $34 is utter madness for that horse. Utter madness. Six uh, Barry 6 he'll, he'll jump from. So, maybe he need, they need to yank his plums down and chop them off as well. Because uh, that could be the best thing for him. I don't know why they persist with... with. <laughs> Holy shit. That was... Uh, I'm sure they heard that. Oh, they must have. I, just, I reckon that was all the bloodstock agents going like, I don't know why they persist. Going like, hey, mate, shut your mouth. <laughs> I don't know what bloodstock agents would be, you know, would be interested in Adelaide River. But anyway, I don't know. <laughs> Brisbane, Brisbane's about to turn into an even bigger river. Yeah. Based on that, water coming down from the sky. God. Yeah, so you're playing some weird exotics this weekend by the sounds of it. Uh, yeah, I'm keen for it though. Don't need to outlay a lot to get a good return. The Alan Brown, race eight, 1,400 metres, handicap. I thought this was near impossible, but I'm going to hand it over to you to talk about Gringotts. Yeah. This should be named, renamed the bloody Sydney shoots itself in the foot uh, stakes. Honestly, like so many of these horses should have been running in the Epsom last week. Amenable, Lindemann, uh, Converge, Shock, Samana, Encap. I know a star won a trial by 12 lengths. <laughs> like you need a pacemaker. The, you throw that horse in the Ep- Epsom last week, there's going to be more genuine pace on. Absolutely. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, yeah, quite clearly Gringotts for me. He's he's already been found in the market. I don't think he I don't think he opened favour, and he's he's into four dollars forty with the good people at Neds. Um, if I was keen on him to win an Epsom, he he puts his field away. Okay, yeah. If Jimmy runs, I'll be on Jimmy. Uh, a horse that, pardon me, his his price has halved since he came in, and yes, he'll have to do it from the hard way. But Territory Express won the uh, provincial championship. Uh, in the autumn, and he has a he has some sneaky good form. This horse, he's been up, he's been competitive in this sort of grade. His first up, trial behind the likes of I Know a Star, and absolutely brain the rest of them. So, um, they're the three I'm kind of interested in. Definitely putting NCAP in the quaddy for insurance. I, I could just see that horse winning again. Barry three. John Well running a drum. Yeah, I could see him just being competitive. He's another one who should have been in the in the Epsom. But anyway, yeah, the Navision race nine, 1200 meter group three for the mares. Set weights and penalties. Any firm opinion here? We see a Lent here resume. Mm. 
No, not yet because, again, there's, there's a couple of dual acceptors. But uh, I thought Roots ran well first up um, in Newcastle behind Terramato. Terramato's a massive price in, in the race we're just talking about. Yeah, Lentia, like, that's the obvious one, isn't it? Yeah. Is it I've, too obvious? I've, She's got a phenomenal first up record. She does, but I've gone with my girl Roots. She's one of mine. Yeah, she is. Um, so, $8.50 and a significant booking. Where the hell has Nash been this spring? Yeah, where has Nash been? Is, is it on us? Have we just missed him? But I, I feel have. like we haven't really talked about Nash at all. No, but who's, who's Nash's pin-up horse at the moment? It used to be Private Eye. It used to be. Mm-hmm. Eduardo before that. So he used pro- to be Think It Over? Yeah, true. He's lost a few pin-ups, Nash. Well, you hit IME he used to ride. J-Mac kicked him off her. Yeah. Um, we didn't talk about that, actually. Private Eye getting an average slot. No, he didn't. Yeah, he got there in the end, didn't he? Unbelievable. Well, you know, it's slim pickings. <laughs> Um, but yeah, roots for me. Oh, I think that's a good bet. Okay, that's a good bet. All right, I think that's about it. Yeah, I'm I'm nervous about this rain. Really? Why? Because you know, geez, little Yaris outside. Oh no, is it a swimmer? I think it's a dry track horse. <laughs> no, she'll be right. Yeah. No, looking forward to the weekend though. Like, mm. it won't be a big betting weekend for me. I don't think. Uh, just, just from there's a few shorties that I think will be hard to beat. There's a couple mm. of big at a big price. I'll have some small specs on, but mm. uh, that's how I'm keen to play it. I'm more keen at Benton Rose Hill than I am at Caulfield. So, yeah. Who says you need a Group One price tag to have a bet? Absolutely not. Like you, you definitely don't. Well, you know, to that point, a race doesn't for us doesn't need to be a Group One for us to be dead keen to watch and bet on it. Absolutely. Um, one of the best races we ever, ever saw was Catalyst versus Alligator Blood up there at Flemington Strait. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, if, if, if it's a good betting race, we're keen to watch, keen to play, keen to partake. Mm. But the, whether you like it or not, having the Group 1 status, mm. believe it or not, apart from prize money, that's what draws the best horses. And guess what we like watching? The best horses. Yes. I agree. Uh that just confirms that the Everest is in the tipping competition. It always was, wasn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Of course it was. Um, so, yeah, tipping comp again this weekend, Drifters. Uh, you will get an email if you're partaking tomorrow morning. Um, you can put your tips in straight away if you like, but if you learned your lesson from Autumn Glow last week, um, you're yeah, more than welcome to keep your powder dry, um, but no later than midday on Saturday to enter your tips and... Ch- don't put your tips in after the fact. Come no. on. Be better than that. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll know what happens. So if you're having a bet, do it responsibly and do it with Neds. Absolutely. Good luck.